The new experience in Microsoft Teams is going to be faster, simpler, smarter, and more flexible than ever. Let's dive into how everything works in Microsoft Teams. You can access Microsoft Teams, whether through a browser as online version, or you can download the app on your computer. To quickly access the online version of Teams, just type teams.microsoft.com. If you're logged into your Microsoft 365 account, you can quickly access it, just like all the other apps. Let's open the new Microsoft Teams on the desktop. Here is a block where you can manage your account. So if we click on this, this is where we can sign out and even add different accounts here. So if you ever wanted to add a different account to switch back and forth, you can do that now. This one's indicated as a personal account, so it's not connected to a school or work one. Let's continue with the basics of Microsoft Teams. Starting with Teams. This is where you see the teams that you're part of, and we're going to create a new team from this tab right here. Now before I go ahead and create a new team, I just want to show you what we're looking at. So this team we have already been added to by somebody else. Underneath are different channels. If we click General, this has been the conversation right here under the General. And we can look at the files that belong in this conversation. We can switch over to a different channel. So the topic could be more specific and maybe have different people added. If we check out the files, we can see just one that belong to this channel. Let's go ahead and create a brand new team and channels underneath that. To create a brand new team, go up top here. Notice that we have the option of join or create a team. Select this. If we're going to join a team, we would need a code to go through. In this example, we're going to select create a team and then add people. On the left here, we have some options. Under the templates, there are all templates you can start from or if you already had a team laid out a certain way, you can copy that setup, or you could go from a group. We're going to start with a template. The advantage of a template is that it's going to create the channels for me automatically underneath, but we can still modify everything. So let's say we have an upcoming event, so we're going to choose this template. Now, when it comes to this part right here, it shows us the seven different channels that are going to get created under this team. These can be modified as well. It's also going to put in nine apps that they think that will be useful with this type of team. This can be modified later as well. Let's use this template. We can choose between private or public. With private, people need permission to join. Public, anyone can join in your organization. If we sent them the link, then they would be able to join with it. In our case, we choose public. Put in the name of the team and a description. Next step, Customize channels. Do we need all seven of these? Or we need to change the name of any of these? It can be done now or later. For now, let's click Done and Create. Sometimes it takes a few moments to create the team, especially if it has a lot of channels listed underneath. If we go back to the navigation bar, we need to make sure we have the team selected. Let's expand all the channels. Notice that there are all channels here, we see the general channel, but if we expand this, we also have hidden channels, and this was part of the template. We show or hide channels this at any time, so if we go back a step, we notice that announcements channel is seen, and we have the hidden ones under here. We can hover over any of these to show them. We can also pin and move channels to the top as well. So if we hit pin, this will move it to the under top here, those three will show, but we can always change to previous style. Whenever you see the ellipses, you can discover more options. For example, delete or edit the channel. This is where we can change the name as well. If we go back one more level to add people to this, we can add people to this channel by selecting it and typing in their name. We can add as many people as we need and choose if they are an owner or a member. Once we are done, this team will show up in their teams. Also, in these settings, we can adjust things, depending on what we need. We go to manage our team and can adjust members here. Let's look at some of the other settings. Under channel, we can manage what channels we want to show for members and for us. 
In settings, we can change the image here. Let's do it now. Next, member permissions to enable channel creation, adding apps, and more. In analytics, we can see where and how many people are interacting. Next, there are different apps that we manage in this team. We can remove current or get more apps from here. The last thing is tags. This is great way to communicate inside the team. Let's create a tag, write down the tag name, and assign it to the people. Now in general, we see a notification saying that a tag was created, and we can copy and send the link for people to join this team. Let's go explore all the possible ways we can communicate inside our team. Here you can see two different accounts, the one we used to create the team and the other from a member we added. From first account, we publish the post that immediately pops open for other account. We reply to the post from member's account. If we look up at the activity, we see notifications that help see what's happening with the conversation. If we want to bring attention to somebody, we can use the at here and type name and that person will get notification. Also, we can tag the entire team to get everyone notified like that. Also, with the option up here, you can change the order of post from bottom to top. Another update. Now we can open conversations in a new window to stay in touch with everything without taking up a lot of room on your screen. A key thing to understand about the different channels is that it allows you to keep your conversations and files organized separately. So in general, there are conversations and files. Meanwhile, in announcements, we see no post and no files. It makes work with different channels more efficient with a workflow that suits best for you. As we move across the top, we notice apps installed from the template. You can remove unused apps from here to make it less confusing. We can open apps in a browser, or we can even go to the settings and change them. The other things worth pointing out is an ability to quickly drag teams in different orders if you want to, and you can always hide the ones you don't need. We can start a new meeting in several different ways. In channels, we have Meet Now button to start a meeting instantly or schedule a meeting feature, which is like the calendar one. Look over at our calendar underneath our teams. Go up top and create new meeting or Meet Now. We pick a spot and fill meeting details as name and participants and hit send. Another way to start a meeting is through chat. Open a chat and go through with video or audio call for a quick talk. If we look at all our different sidebar icons, we notice activity tab that collects notifications from both chats and teams. Files tab keep everything that we have access to with a quick access to the team's documents. That's all for today. We hope that this tutorial was useful to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more great content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.